Conservancy. Central Park is a living work of art, and even lifelong New Yorkers don't know its biggest secret that it is cared for by the Central Park Conservancy, its members, and volunteers. Learn more at centralparknyc.org. On the next Brian Lehrer Show, what do you do after being head of the FBI? Apparently, you start writing crime novels. We'll talk to James Comey about his new one, set partly here in New York, and talk to him about real-life justice in America, too. Also, our climate story of the week. What exactly did Donald Trump promise those fossil fuel executives in exchange for a billion dollars in campaign donations? The Brian Lehrer Show, weekdays at 10 a.m. on WNYC. Marketplace Morning Report is coming up next, and then in 10 minutes at 9 o'clock, it's the BBC News Hour on WNYC. Let's check in with London and see what they're working on. Hello, London. Good morning, WNYC. I'm Tim Franks. On today's news hour, three European states recognize Palestine. What difference will it make? That's BBC News Hour, coming up at 9 on WNYC. Sunny and 70 right now, the big city on our way to a sunny day with a high of 83, mostly clear and 64 tonight. And then tomorrow, we have a chance of afternoon showers and thunderstorms. We'll see more clouds through the day and a high of 78. Thursday, another chance of showers, partly sunny and mid-70s for a high. Once again in the city, 70 and sunny, it's 8.52. When carbon offsets are a little off. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Schwab. Schwab offers investors choices like full-service wealth management, self-directed investing options, and trading on think or swim. More at schwab.com. And by Amazon Business, helping provide a smarter, easier way to get the supplies businesses need to thrive. Amazon Business, your partner for smart business buying. From Marketplace, I'm Sabri Beneshore, in for David Brancaccio. When a company or a person causes CO2 emissions, they can offset that by buying carbon credits, paying someone else to reduce CO2 emissions. But it's hard to tell sometimes whether credits are legit or not. To deal with that problem, the White House is introducing a set of carbon credit standards to help people figure out if carbon offsets are indeed offsetting. Marketplace's Nova Safo has more. The Biden administration is offering a set of voluntary principles, as it calls them, for establishing legitimate carbon credit markets. For example, the administration wants to standardize the idea that one credit corresponds to one ton of carbon dioxide or its equivalent reduced or removed from the atmosphere. And that absent that credit, the reduction or removal would not have happened on its own. The White House says independent observers should be able to measure the impacts. Carbon credit schemes have come under criticism for making lofty claims which can't be backed up with measurable results. There are certification organizations, but they've faced questions about their effectiveness. The White House says companies should first clean up as much of their own emissions as possible before relying on credits. I'm Nova Safo for Marketplace. All right, let's do the numbers. Dow and Dow futures are down less than a tenth of a percent. S&P futures are up a tenth of a percent. NASDAQ futures up two tenths of a percent. The yield on the 10-year treasury is 4.461 percent. T-Mobile is buying up most of U.S. cellular for $4.4 billion. That'll get T-Mobile 2,000 additional towers for cell phone service. T-Mobile stock down two tenths percent in pre-market trading. Apple's iPhone sales in China jumped 52 percent in April. Apple stock is up about 1.4 percent in pre-market trading marketplace morning report is supported by bitwarden the password manager used by millions for streamlined password management at home and at work learn more about stress-free security at bitwarden.com and by million bazillion a podcast from marketplace that makes it fun and easy for parents to teach their kids about money listen to million bazillion wherever you get your podcasts 
Beneath the human suffering wrought by the war between Israel and Hamas is an economic reality, and that is what we turn to this week. We'll be taking a look at the economies of Israel and the West Bank and Gaza. Israel's economy contracted 20% in the last quarter of last year, but has since rebounded. 1.7 million Palestinians, on the other hand, have slid into poverty. We start with some context. We'll take a look at the Palestinian economy before the current war. Ibrahim Shikaki is a professor of economics at Trinity College. Professor, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. A lot of key infrastructure in the West Bank is controlled by Israel. Water borders, customs roads, Gaza's borders, or, of course, controlled by Israel and Egypt. I know this is a very broad question, but what does or did the Palestinian economy look like in that environment? It didn't look great. Since the occupation in 1967, one of the first military orders of the Israeli military commander were actually economic. So they decided to close off all the banks. They had very restrictive procedures on importing and exporting. Really, the Palestinian economy since 1967 has been extremely dependent on the Israeli economy. Even after the establishment of the Palestinian Authority in the early 1990s, a lot of those dependencies were still entrenched and you just had new dependencies on international aid and and then private debt. The movement of Palestinian labor has been almost cut off into Israel. What has that meant for the two economies. As for the West Bank, well, it has meant a lot. In the third quarter of 2023, you had roughly 150,000 Palestinians from the West Bank working in the Israeli economy. In quarter four, that went down to 17,000. So from 150,000 to 17,000. During that third quarter of 2023, the Palestinians who were working in Israel brought back roughly $1 billion of income. In the fourth quarter, that was around 79 million. So that impact on Palestinian workers, obviously this macroeconomic impact on what we call aggregate demand is going to have a continuing level of ramifications on not just on the macroeconomic aspects, but also the livelihood and the ability of Palestinians to literally survive. Is there an opportunity for exports to assist there? How, how do exports work in the Palestinian economy? Yeah, so you have two aspects there, right? I mean, the first has to do with control over borders. And that's obviously one of the main problems that you have. Israel has complete control over any borders in the West Bank, obviously in the Gaza Strip as well. You had that part that related to Egypt, but that was also very highly coordinated with Israel. But really, the second problem has to do with whether we are producing. So what we call the productive sector, so manufacturing, agriculture, that actually produce the goods that we would export, for example, those have been diminishing since really 1967. And so what you've had is the rise of specific, what I call occupation circumventing economic activities. The type of economic activity that now exists in the West Bank and before October in the Gaza Strip are basically economic activities that just entrench that dependency. There's very little that is being produced and there's very little control over borders, which basically means that is going to be a very weak tool in terms of development in the future. Ibrahim Shikaki is a professor of economics at Trinity College. Professor, thank you so much. Thank you. We also talked with Professor Shikaki about the economic background in Gaza specifically. Catch that conversation on our podcast if you miss it on the air. Later today, we'll hear about the financial ties holding Israelis and Palestinians together, plus a look at what the war has meant for the Palestinian and Israeli economies. Stay tuned for that in the coming days. Our producers are Nick Perez, Ariana Rosas, Alex Schroeder, and Erica Soderstrom. Our senior producer is Meredith Gerritsen Morby. In New York, I'm Sabri Benishur with the Marketplace Morning Report. From APM, American Public Media.